Ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out on CGTN. And it's going over what's really behind the fall in life expectancy in the U.S. So this is November 29th, 2019. So this is interesting, the way these articles are coming out and how they all hit at once. So you can best believe we're going to be seeing this pop back up in 2020, especially if situations don't change in the U.S., which I sure don't expect them to. Life expectancy in the United States is falling, even as it is rising. It's actually going up in Europe and around the world. Wow. A new study finds the drop is most pronounced in the industrial Midwest and Appalachia, mostly Republican states that have been going through economically challenging times. In contrast, residents of New York, California, and Texas, the country's most populous states, as well as Oregon, are living longer, according to the study published this week in the prestigious journal of the American Medical Association. This study in many ways echoes other research focusing on so-called deaths of despair, plaguing middle-aged white people. However, this finds the early deaths are happening to people of all races and all ages to differing degrees. Yeah, it's definitely not the same. A major cause of increasing midlife mortality is a large increase in fatal drug overdoses beginning in the 1990s, suicides and organ system diseases, including hypertensive diseases, alcohol, liver disease, uh, infectious diseases, and liver cancer were also significant factors. The study cited three lines of evidence that may explain the declines. First, it noted the U.S. health disadvantage compared to other nations an increase in midlife death started in the 1980s and 90s, a period marked by a major transformation in the nation's economy, substantial job losses in manufacturing and other uh, sectors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there were recessions in the 80s and 90s. I just want you to also keep a mental note of that. And they're right. You know, I remember a time when there was substantial job loss during that time period. Okay, and other sectors, contraction of the middle class, wage stagnation, and reduced intergenerational mobility, income inequality widened surpassing levels of other countries, concurrent with the deepening U.S. health disadvantage. Second, adults with little education and women, those most vulnerable to the changing economy, experience the largest increase in death rates. Well, that's how it is with opioids when you really think about it. According to what they're telling us, it's mainly impacting the ones with less education. Third, the increase in death rates was concentrated in areas with a history of economic challenges, such as rural U.S. areas and the industrial Midwest, and was lowest on the West Coast and in populous states with more robust economies. The study notes that a possible reason for larger life expectancy gains in metropolitan areas is an increase in population with college degrees. It added 
that any theory explaining the decreasing U.S. life expectancy must explain why this trend is less pronounced in other industrialized countries. Average life expectancy in the United States fell behind other wealthy countries in 1998. So this didn't just start, y'all. This did not just start. They started falling behind in 1998. This has been going on for quite some time. You know, when I read my other articles, they act like, oh, well, you know, 2014, no. So this apparently started long before that. And the gap has grown steadily since. According to the World Health Organization, global life expectancy grew by 5.5 years between 2000 and 2016. Life expectancy in China, for example, has jumped from 44 in 1960 to 71.4 in 2000 to 76.34 in 2015. Well, the U.S. helped them do it by sending all of their jobs over there. They were able to generate so much revenue, they have better health care now. According to the National Bureau of Statistics of China, every wealthy country except the United States has universal health coverage. There you go. There you go. You know, in, in America, everything's all about greed. Money before health. In fact, money before life. Right now in the United States, health care is a major and divisive political issue. Americans are paying by far more for their medical care than anyone and dying earlier than everyone else. That's fucked up. Okay, so... Everybody else have free health care. Those people's life expectancies are increasing. America not only makes you pay for this shit and it's astronomical, you die earlier than everybody else. <laughs> I don't blame people from countries with free health care for not coming here. Who the hell would leave that and come here and pay for it? You'd be better off just relocating somewhere else in your country and keeping your health care, opposed to crossing the ocean and coming to live here. I wouldn't recommend that anyway. Housing is overpriced. You know, when you come to America, every damn thing is overpriced. It's overpriced because you got the greediest people in the history of this planet running everything. And when you go back in the ancient text, there was not all this greed going on in the world like it is now. You know, our forefathers lived on this earth without all of this greed and and they lived good lives too. But these folks have come and put their spin on industrializing the place and they actually ruined it. Because how do you go back now? You can't. You got to keep moving forward and overpricing everything. You just got to keep doing it. And they have made it hard on themselves because as we move forward, it's going to be less of a population in America with everything costing these astronomical prices. It's going to self-implode. It's not going to work. You, you got your baby boomers dying out and it's going to leave much smaller populations in America and you already got everything overinflated. So now you got to figure out what you're going to do to keep your economy going with less people and everything overpriced. They've ruined everything. Okay, so Americans are paying by far more for medical care than anyone and dying earlier <laughs> than everyone. Do you know how asinine that sounds? See, this is what happens when you leave it up to the lie IQ people. We pay the most and die the earliest <laughs> with healthcare in this country. <sighs> However, wealthy Americans have access to the best healthcare in the world. 
a quick look at, well, it's so few of them, though. They're, they're what, 1% of the population? Come on, y'all. That's, this, is, this is comical. Just reading that last paragraph, that's comical. A quick look at the map of the increase in mortality rates confirm that it largely matches the parts of the country where Trump is popular and competitive. Maps of the United States showing racial diversity, passport ownership, marriage rates. Oh, all right. So let me just go down here. This stuff is ridiculous. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. A front runner. So we're talking about Elizabeth Warren and some polls to be Democratic candidates president in 2020 is advocating a Canadian style medical care system. Well, the Canadians do get free health care. However, pundits and many of her Democratic opponents are calling her proposals to do what all other wealthy nations do, unworkable and unrealistic. And that's because you got to understand many of the politicians are bought and paid for by these healthcare companies out here, these health giants. And they get so much money from them, they don't want this to change. It's all about money. And like I said, it's greed over health. And that's why you will always have opponents to it, fighting against it because they have been propping up these healthcare companies for decades. And they have been getting all kinds of money and kickbacks from them to keep the industry out here paying for healthcare. And these politicians, because they're getting so much money, they're going to fight like hell not to change it. Okay, so the sad fact is large portions of the U.S. public are being left behind by the information revolution. The world is changing and the days when a high school diploma was a ticket to a steady job and middle class life are long gone. This is not only breaking the spirit of many people, but is this study shows, as this study shows, actually killing them. Obviously, they don't care. Like I said, greed over health, greed over everything, <laughs> even greed over quality of life in America. Mortality study notes, the problem goes beyond drug and alcohol addiction and stress set. Uh, saying the causes of economic despair may be more nuanced. Perceptions and frustrations, explanations may matter as much as absolute income or net worth. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about this. Many of those poorest White Americans are in rural America, and many of the farms that are sinking in the country are in rural America. So, you know, those are the people that they are talking about. It offers a hint about a possible solution, noting social protection policies deserve special attention countries with higher life expectancy, spend more of their budget on social services and outperform the United States in terms of education, child poverty, and other measures of well-being. But you know what? They talk against it. Remember, if y'all remember socialism, you know, was coming up real big around Obama although Obama did not do a lot of socialism. I don't give a damn about what anybody say he didn't. These folks spoke against it, but it's showing you that countries that have that, 
are a lot better off, especially when it comes down to their life expectancy, along with education, child poverty, and well-being. So these folks fight against their own best interests. So I guess they prefer dying. How many times have we seen them out open? Oh, I'm against socialism. Oh, I'm against socialism. And you can see the countries right now that have that are outperforming the U.S., but, you know, this is what happens when you got your country ran by slow-witted, lie IQ people. For the moment, the area of the U.S. that are dying for these kinds of services are the areas that want them the least. That's right. You know, remember, during the Tea Party, you notice the Tea Party don't even come up anymore. You know, that was all because of Obama, but you you don't hear nothing about them anymore. So they talked all that socialism, socialism. And remember, they had all those um, protest signs that were spelled wrong. <laughs> I remember that. Whoa, that was funny. That was funny. And, and then the Mexicans, when they marched, their signs were written better than the people from rural America that supported Trump. <laughs> How embarrassing, how embarrassing, man, how embarrassing. But ladies and gentlemen, what they are saying is the countries that have free health care and they pour more, more of their money into taking care of their populations do not have a life expectancy problem. The U.S., which refused to do that out of greed, have a life expectancy problem. They are the only ones declining in life expectancy out of all of the wealthy nations on the planet. Says a lot about who's running it, you know, but see, that's why Trump was elected, y'all, because everything is declining among the white community. So Trump won, but look, Trump can't fix nothing. Trump can't even fix himself. That man is go from one scandal to the next. He's been in scandals since he stepped foot in the White House. If he can't manage his own life and his own well-being, what makes you think he could do that for anyone else? And plus, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, is way greater than Trump. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.